Tonight, 12 News investigates a story 12 years in the making. A vital woman, Kamisha Block, was killed in Iraq while serving in the military. Her family calls the events following her death a military cover-up, and they want justice. 12 News reporter Lauren Hinsley unpacks the details of this unsettling story. Kevin and Erica, many soldiers have come forward over the last several years to speak with the Block family about the events leading up to Kamisha's death in 2007. Those soldiers also shared their stories with me. Now, Kamisha's sister has taken that information to some of the top offices in Washington. She's on a mission to get justice for Kamisha. So how does it make you feel when you see a yellow but butterfly? Then she's around. You know, every time I get sad, I see one. So. A yellow butterfly reminds Shanta Block of two things. Her sister, Army Specialist Kamisha Block, and staying focused on her mission. I'm just trying to get justice for my sister. Shanta will never forget August 2007. The news the Block family received turned their lives upside down. I remember my mom just screaming. Just screaming, just watching her just scream, you know. And I seen my dad, he cried for the first time I ever seen my dad cry. The family had learned Kamisha Block was shot and killed while serving in Iraq. The Department of Defense told the Block family Kamisha was shot in the chest by friendly fire. It would take the family a grueling six months to learn the truth. Why do you think they want to cover this up? Just so that they don't have a blemish on their image. The family began to question the Department of Defense when her body was returned home to Vider, Texas, and they opened up the casket. She's been shot in the head. There's a bullet hole in her head. What happened to Kamisha Block? Slowly, fellow soldiers came forward with their stories. It was obvious that they were in a relationship when we were stateside. To understand, we have to take a look back. Kamisha Block enlisted in the Army in July 2005. In December 2006, she was sent to Fort Hood in Texas. Friends say that's where she caught the eye of Paul Brandon Norris. Most called him Brandon. He was a staff sergeant, she a specialist. His higher rank meant the two couldn't date. A rule, the pair broke. He was my squad leader, so it was, it was obvious to me, it was obvious to the other team leaders. In May 2007, Kamisha was deployed to Camp Liberty in Iraq. Brandon followed in late June. Shanta says while Kamisha was abroad, their phone calls took a dark turn. And she had also mentioned something else that day. She said that if something ever happens to me, you make sure that you take care of mom because you're the strong one, Shanta. Many soldiers reported a volatile relationship between the couple. One month before her death, a fellow soldier says he spoke up. And I've never been very good at keeping my mouth shut. So uh, that's when, uh, when I went to the chain of command, I used the open door policy and spoke to uh, the first sergeant and the company commander at the same time. Do you ever feel as though any action was taken after you, um, you know, went to use that open door policy? Yeah, there was action taken to sweep it under the rug. I mean, that's, they just kind of blew everything off. And Hastings wasn't the only one to come forward. Others describe an increasingly toxic relationship. They question Brandon's stability. Shanta believes military leaders knew Kamisha was in danger and did not take action. I know their names. Because they haven't been charged, 12 News is not naming the men. One is currently a lieutenant colonel serving in Europe. Another is a sergeant major serving in Texas. The third has retired from the military. He's the only one who agreed to answer any questions for 12 News. The man identified himself as Brandon's direct supervisor. He said in part, two people did something illegal in the army and they have to live with the consequences. Kamisha sat in my office with another lieutenant and was given every opportunity opportunity to tell us the truth. They chose to hide it. Another soldier did come forward with a chilling tale of what happened the day Kamisha died. Norris was having some kind of issue and I don't know what it was. I, 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 can't, I can't remember if it was mental health or physical. The lieutenant had to physically hold him back and say, no, you're not going. Brandon was prohibited from going on mission that day. Later, the group returned to camp, including Kamisha, and that's when Brandon turned violent. He had shot her five times and shot himself in the head. He shot her in every main organ, and then he, you know, put the gun to his head. 
The things that I don't understand is the command knew about it. The command knew that he was going crazy. He needed help also. So I feel like two people died under command. On August 16th, 2007, Brandon shot Kamisha and then turned the gun on himself. Why didn't he take this guy's gun? Like, why didn't, why weren't other steps taken was the question in my mind. A question fellow soldiers continue to ask. I think about it every day. I mean, I, uh, I, I think about both families every day. I, I, I really don't have a, a whole lot of choice in the matter. Shanta has heard from numerous soldiers. She wants accountability and won't stop fighting until there's justice for Kamisha. What do you want to say to these men? I want to say that you could have helped my sister and that she was screaming out for help and nobody would help her. Soldiers reported it and still you turned your head, you know, and you let it go that far until she's dead now. Kamisha's case has been reopened. Shanta says the United States Army Criminal Investigation Division is handling the investigation. Shanta is also reaching out to U.S. Senators to ask for a congressional hearing. In the studio, Lauren Hensley, 12 News. Kamisha's sister has also created a change.org petition. She is asking for people to sign it so she can send it to lawmakers in hopes of getting that congressional hearing.